how Twitter reacted to the game yesterday. Um, and let's start off with Football Confidential saying um, yet more PGMOL corruption. Here's Carlos's elbow smash on Hill. And then he could have had a, been a penalty and a red. That aside, the red that Cash and Kamara should have received if it's Kuti um, each sent off for each. Um, do you think that was a sending off? I don't know. I mean, when you slow it down, it looks bad. But I, d I don't know if it's just an innocuous arm or if, it, if it's a, a I think genuine it was swipe. That, to be honest, huh? I think it was. I mean, if you see that whole clip, it's just both of them running for the ball, and, and as he's running, but slow, it, slow down. It does kind of look like he goes for it. Yeah. He really goes for it. But I don't know. It might, I think but it's very much clipped up. It's like that's just the stride of when he's running. Yeah, it could easily be that as well. So it's. I think you can make anything look worse than it is. Like, he, he can't run like this. No, he has to run like that. And when and obviously if you're running at pace it's, you're going to have big swipes so I think I'm probably making a lot of nothing there but in that same clip it does bounce off uh, the, another defender's arm yeah but I don't think that's handball and anyway apart from that we should have had another penalty uh, throughout the game but at that moment VAR isn't working in the game yeah, but I don't think they come back to that anyway. It'd be interesting, though, like if VAR was working and if they were to go, because you've seen weird things given before, haven't you? That's also true. Um, next up is just fuck. With <laughs> yeah, uh, it's limping. Off. Look at that. It's yeah. just... Oh, look, at least he's Nothing unaided. He wanted to at see. least he's unaided. Yeah, and he did actually walk off the pitch instead so, of get, uh, stretch it off. So that's a positive, I guess. I, but then again, I think Madison walked off, didn't he? Well, he wasn't yeah, stretched did. off, so yeah. who knows? Maybe it's not a good idea he's walking off, you know what I mean? Didn't, didn't Van der Ven walk off as well? No, he was carried by two oh, he people. By but two he's, people. yeah, you can see there he's got heavy strapping on his uh, on his ankle there. So look, let's just hope he's okay. But it's also um, easy to forget that Basuma's is back for next game. So mm. it's not all the worst in the yeah. end. But yeah, let's hope he's back. Imagine a midfield next week of Basuma, Bentancor, and Lacelso, or Ooh. and then Kulisevsky back out wide. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, please. <laughs> Tottenham saying all action performance from Giovanni Lacelso with his heat map yesterday: seventy-six passes, four tackles, and a goal. Um, Look at that ground he was covering yesterday. Yeah, he was absolutely everywhere. Brilliant, brilliant performance from uh, from Gio. Love, love to see it. And hopefully the start of a little run for him, I'm hoping. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, Jay says Romero got a straight red card for getting the ball but catching the player on the follow-through. And that's exactly yeah, what happened see, here. Yeah, we see here, Dinia stamps on him. I know he gets the ball, but are we are we saying... Are we, oh yeah, look, I don't know. Are we saying that it's... Uh, I don't know. For me... If Romero's is a red, that's that's a penalty at least. I'm not saying it's a red, but that's a penalty. I think that um, if if Romero's the one doing that challenge, he gets penalised for it. Mm. In my opinion, you got to have consistency. Yeah, and there's no consistency here. I agree. I think that's a penalty. Right, moving on. Uh, Cody Mack showing Vicario's lucky <laughs> after kissing. Yeah, the ball he just kisses well. the ball. He slips it, but he just does a little kiss <laughs> on the ball there. Brilliant. Yeah, I think he's like he, he knew he got away with one there, yeah. Vicario. All right, next one. Uh, Sam THFC saying Tottenham injured and suspended 11. It's actually mad that we can put an injured and suspended 11, although I don't think Hugo Lloris is injured or suspended. But uh, maybe we should put Alfie Whiteman there because he is injured. But you look at the rest of the team, it's mad. He's, he's banished from the team. That's what oh, Lloris is. banished. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Van der Ven, Romero, Phillips, Perisic, Bentancor, Bissouma, Saar, Madison, Richarlison, Solomon. That's a last... That competes... That, decent that 11, probably gets it? conference league. Maybe better. You think only Con well? I don't know how many goals we're scoring with Solomon and Richarlison. On <laughs> yeah, but you know, Basuma's That's a good team. That's a, a good, good team, team up until the front line. Richie, Richie scored a few goals once upon a time. Yeah, once it's not upon a, bad, a time. It's not a bad team. He's uh, he's been at us a year and nearly a half now, and he's only scored three Premier League goals. Uh. <laughs> doesn't matter uh, uh, Kaylee Graphics XG map from Spurs Billy yesterday crazy enter and match only three goals uh, it was the real shock and it was actually when you look at how the game was and how many chances there were at both ends how was it only three goals in that game yesterday it's yeah, mad shame but, but look at how many shots we had in the box compared to them as well yeah. uh, we had so many good opportunities inside the area um, it's just didn't make the most of them really really disappointing up to Joe, uh, five. Uh, Tottenham are only fifth side in the Premier League history to lose three consecutive games uh, despite going 1-0 up ahead in all three. And the first since Leicester City in December 2014, whose third game was also against Aston Villa. So first team to lose three in a row, one going 1-0 up. Great. 
Fantastic. <laughs> Spursy. Very Spursy. Um, this was on Brian Hill's like tweets yesterday uh, saying this apparently this isn't a penalty. So Brian Hill definitely thought it was a penalty, didn't yeah, he? But he would do, wouldn't he? Yeah, definitely, of course. Uh, uh, this was a great moment yesterday. Jacko, uh, top five moments before disaster when uh, Matty Cash um, did that challenge on Ben Tankle yesterday. Romero just stood up and gave him the death stare. And that's it. Matty Cash has done it at Villa Park next year. You see the player liaison as well. He's not happy. <laughs> <laughs> They're all gunning They're for all Matty Cash. <laughs> They're all staring and this at This isn't him. the first time Matty Cash has done this to one of our players as well. Cast your mind back to two years ago when he did the Matt Doherty. So, Matty Cash, we've got a meeting with you at Villa Park in, a, in next year. You bet. You bet. Carly T saying, me on my way to find Matty Cash. <laughs> <laughs> Dyer doing his way up the stands. Brilliant. Um, Ethan saying, Villa Park, we will be there with Romero doing the death stare. Um, another one from Carly T saying Romero won't forget. He most definitely won't. Um, <laughs> Romero, uh, when he sees Cash next year, look at that cool bloody <laughs> challenge on uh, Richarlison when Spurs played uh, Everton. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Matty Cash is that. definitely getting that in the opening few minutes in the Villa Park game. Hundred percent. If I'm Unai Emery, I'm doing the smart thing and not playing Matty yeah, Cash. That's that what game. you should do. Uh, Squawker saying Tottenham are the first team in Premier League history to go unbeaten in the first 10 games of the season and then lose their next three games. Uh, I mean, it's quite a specific stat, but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there you go. Um, Jacko saying the Kulisevsky experiment as a number 10 worked very well for me. Unlucky not to score in the first half. He pressed very well and his link-up play was excellent. He asked, he has so much more potential in that position than as a winger. I would love to see him there again. And I completely agree. I do think he's actually more tailor-made to that role than he is out wide. Yeah, I think maybe, you know, having that upper body strength that he has... Um... And also we know that he's not like a, he's not slow, but he's not like a, he doesn't have blistering pace. So maybe having that in the center, you know, definitely on the, on Sunday, that that definitely showed me he, he can definitely play that role I kinda, very, very well. I kind of feel like he's more suited to it, for like for the same reasons, like Bernardo Silva's more suited to playing in the middle as, as to out wide. I mm. feel like that ball retention, that ball, uh, the way he progresses the ball is just so good. It's just so hard to get the ball off him. And when he's in the middle there, it just causes carnage. And he's got a bit more opportunity to show his quality as well yeah mm. I feel like he does is sometimes a little bit wasted out on that right hand side albeit I do think he needs to play there for the foreseeable future whilst we got these injuries um, Poseidon's ITK says uh, would you accept relegation if cap if cash breaks both kneecaps <laughs> would, <laughs> would you, you? <laughs> yeah let's get relegated <laughs> Kuti Romero says today's game made me more sure that he needs to be the man for the next five years ridiculous how good we play all things considered yeah I, mean, I couldn't agree Ange. I know for, that's what I was saying like yesterday even though we lost and obviously it's three losses in the row but I haven't been more sure than yesterday that we're, that this guy knows what he's doing yeah and it's just like as every game progresses I know the Wolves game was a terrible but actually the Wolves game in a strange way um, helped us a bit more because usually in, in previous managements that we have like you have that Wolves game and he'll probably and Conte would play the same 11 probably the next game mm -hmm. just like he'll he'll believe in the team that he picked in that game is the right way to go where Ange he learns from his mistakes and, and makes us better and, and that's what we saw mm. this weekend 100% uh, Brian Hill on Instagram from the Spurs Express saying it wasn't the result we wanted but this doesn't stop Stop. let's keep working hard work sooner or later brings the reward amazing support from the fans today come on you spurs and there you see and rubbing off on him already saying this doesn't stop we don't stop come on brian uh premier league panel says that the Sp uh, for spurs think that brennan on the right wing hill on the left wing hula right center mig dynamic looked good villa struggled to cope with the overloads brennan and kulu generated um this is worth persisting with whilst madison is injured they lost the threat when Hill went off and Kulisevsky returned to right wing with Brennan on the left wing. Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with that, but I feel like maybe we should just revert away from that just for one game against Man City because I do feel like Brian Hill will just get completely dominated against Kyle Walker. Yeah, but yeah, I I, I agree with that as well. Um, what I would say is I don't know if it, I don't know if we lost threat because of the change of position or because it was just late in the game. I think the players were very tired. You could see they put in a lot of effort, of effort and a lot, I saw La Celso was getting tired as well. But um, I definitely agree with what he was saying before. Like that that, that dynamic looks really really strong, and um, especially while Madison we're losing that creativity, Madison making up with like with Kulu and La Celso both there um, definitely makes up for that. 
James Harris says uh, with a quote saying, Dad, tell me about Rodrigo Bentancourt's 30 minute comeback. And <laughs> it's just Vince McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk. It's too painful to talk about. It's, I mean, it was so good. And now he's got injured again. I just, I can't. It breaks my heart. Yeah, it really breaks does. my heart. Brings a tear to my eye. Emerson on Instagram yesterday saying, Not the result we wanted, but we will continue doing everything. Um, yeah. Yeah. Jay says, um, no chance the pressure is on Ange. This is horrendous. It's on our own shite ownership for not getting him the centre-backs he asked for in August. And that's absolutely spot on, isn't it? Because we knew it, Ange knew it, everyone knew it, that if we don't buy centre-backs in the summer window, we are going to pay the uh, consequences. And that's what we're doing right now. And literally, you can literally directly link it. You can see what happened on the pitch. Even like midfielders, we had good enough cover, but we literally just... There was we had no recognised centre back. We had nothing, and even if we had like Lloyd Kelly there, we might have won the game. You know what I mean? Just one centre back there who could play Ange the way one wants to. We might Just have a won. Natural centre back. That's not Eric Dyer. Who can who can run? Yeah, that's it. And um, so and they knew it because they tried at the end of the window, didn't they, to get someone in? They couldn't do it. So it's not like it's not a secret. It's not like a surprise that we needed a centre back. So they only have themselves to blame. Um, is this actual Giovanni Lo Celso's account? I don't think it is. It's got, two, it it's is. got 270,000. Oh, maybe it is, but there's no uh, tick or anything. But anyway, he says, uh, not the result we wanted, but we keep fighting. Thanks to our fans for the support. And it was great to see him on the score sheet. And um, it was what his performance deserves, really. Yeah, and I think it was really great to see him play as well as he did. And hopefully he starts getting some of the, some of the fans who are against him back on side now and they will start supporting him because if he puts in performances like that, he's going to be a massive help to us. Yeah. Harry Brooks saying, I'm absolutely certain that Ange Postacoglu is going to produce the best and most successful Spurs team in my lifetime. I like to think I'm mature enough to understand that these things take time, especially when you've had so much go against you. Spurs have to let him succeed. And I think we will let him succeed. And I think the fans... Like usually after three defeats in a row, we'll start getting on a manager's back, but not this time. Yeah, definitely not. I think it's the most positive a lot of Spurs fans have been after a defeat. And even you know, even against Chelsea, we lost 4-1. A lot of Spurs fans are positive. So I think that we're ready to give this manager time. But yeah, he needs backing. And if he doesn't get the backing, we've seen with our own eyes what we're capable of with with a full team full of what we're, what Ange can... Um, how Ange wants to play. So we just all he needs is backing. We know that. And, you know... Four one loss against Chelsea at home against one of our biggest rivals. Team gets clapped off the pitch. Mm -hmm. exactly. Two one loss at home to Villa. A third loss in a row. Team gets clapped off the pitch. That just shows you what Ange is bringing to this football club. Mm -hmm. um, Spurs OTM saying if Matty Cash was Christian Romero, he would have been sent off already. And I agree with that. <laughs> I really yeah. do. I'm telling you, if Romero put that challenge in and the player goes down injured, off injured, uh, Romero is probably getting sent off. Mm -hmm. Um, Spurs Army saying very a very frustrating watch some promising things from the game the Celso is great today Son scores three but all offside countless chances wasted lapses in concentration when defending cost us again and that's three losses on the bounce with City away up next so don't get easier yeah that's definitely true but we can lose that game and I'm still confident that we can have a good season. Honestly, yeah. it's a long season. A lot of teams can't having European football. So, But I also, I think we can give them a game. I really don't think we're going to go there and just lose 5-0. I don't. I think we're going to give them a game. I don't think we're going to win or probably, I don't even think we're going to draw. But I think we're going to go there and play our football and I, I reckon we can create chances. Mm. If Chelsea can get a point off City, why can't we? Exactly. Uh, suppose OTM with a heartbreak emoji with Ben Tancor coming off the pitch yesterday. Yeah. Uh, that was, I mean, the whole stadium was heartbroken in that moment of the game. It was so unfortunate. Uh, Premier League panel saying Ben Tancor's performance before he got injured was superb. Hybrid, box to box, deep line playmaker can hurt you with the deep carries and also creative passing. He's consistently infiltrated Villa's high line. They need him to be fit because he's the most expansive passer in the Spurs squad. Ooh. And I'd even go as far to say that he's the best midfielder we have at this football club most expansive passer in the squad well, I don't know what more expansive than Madison I guess well, what, what do you mean by expansive mm. what does expansive mean like, I don't know, is, that, is that a wide is that the, like the biggest range of passing is that what you're saying yeah maybe maybe but that's true but can 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 Madison do that passing from like really deep like as well as Ben Tancourt can do it 
I mean, yeah, no, can't he? I think he can, but not maybe not as to the level that Ben Tancourt can do. I love that pass that Ben Tancourt has when he's just so deep and just whips it in through the middle. Mm. I think Madison could do it. I don't know. I think it was, I think it's quite close if we're talking about just passing mm. between uh, him and, and Ben Tancourt. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Uh, ONTHFC saying games Emerson has started versus games Emerson was benched. So 2-2, two, two, Emerson started against Brentford. Then every game we've won this season, <laughs> Emerson didn't start. Basically, Emerson hasn't won a game so yeah. far this season. It's ridiculous, uh, isn't it? Uh, some anti-Emerson prop there. Sorry, uh, Barry, uh, but there you go. Uh, not look, I don't hate Emerson. I'm just, it's just these are the facts. These are facts. This isn't literally every game that we've dropped points in this season. Emerson has played over sixty minutes. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to say it's his down to him, but that's just that's just a fact. But <laughs> but the reality is. He's not good enough on the ball for an Ange system. That's just the reality. Correct. That is true. That, that's also a fact. But I don't know if the two are linked. Um, very well could be. <laughs> uh, Charlie Paris says, uh, Ben Tancourt injury changed the game, in my opinion. He was running the football match. Just um, a beautifully elegant, smart, decisive player who seems built to play the sixth role under Ange. It's not too serious because the ability to spray passes from deep in behind gives us that extra threat. And this is what I've been saying for so long. Ben Tancor is so good in that sixth role, especially for in an Ange Postacoglu system. I've been saying it for so long and um, I've had arguments with people about it and I think it's coming to fruition now, in my opinion. Yeah, no reason why he can't play that sixth role. I mean, look, he's brilliant in that sixth role uh, yesterday. Uh, I think he can do. I could think he can do probably any role you ask him to. But he looked just so good in that role yesterday. Um, he's so it's phenomenal. silky, man. He's so silky, and he like marries it with that bite in midfield that he has as well. It's like we only got half an hour. It's like a drug. I need another hit. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? You only, you only got a, a small hit. You need a need a bigger one. <laughs> oh, man, I need some bent. <laughs> Uh, talking THFC, Matt Cash continuing to be an absolute scumbag year after year. What a surprise. Yeah. And that's the picture of him doing Matt Doherty in a couple of years ago. Fast forward two years and he's doing in Rodrigo Bentancor as bastard. well. So, what a bastard. Um, Spurs OTM, Pedro Porro's first half by numbers, 85 pass, percent, uh, pass accuracy, 40 touches, 23 out of 27 passes completed, 3 out of 5 long balls completed, 2 out of 2 aerial duels won, 2 ball recoveries, 2 key passes, 1 big chance created and 1 assist from Statman Dave. So um, unbelievable display from Pedro Porro yeah, yesterday. Brilliant. brilliant. Um, and there's Paul O'Keefe saying, seen enough to suggest Spurs will be fine long term under and despite an injury ravaged squad, it's only some poor finishing and getting a bit of luck that they don't win today quite comfortably. The obvious flaw was always going to be squad depth and being able to keep our first 11 fit and it's what we've been saying all stream. But it's true. No, no, that is true. But I don't even, I, I, it's not even... Um, our first eleven is just the centre backs. I yeah. think everyone else is great. Yeah, and I agreed. think and now I and now I'm looking at that and thinking, when everyone's back, it's good, you know if they can keep up that level of performance, Andrew's going to have a lot of selection headaches mm. on his on his uh, on the card. Yeah. Um, and this was the challenge fry Matty Cash on Rodrigo Bentancor. I just don't just want to watch that dirty, again. Let's just, just move dirty, on. Dirty, dirty bastard. Um, Guarav, the analyst, says former Spurs set peak coach Gio uh, Vio. Yeah. Is this old? Yeah. All right, fine. So, yeah, that is the way uh, we did react to the game yesterday on Twitter. 